Good morning and welcome to today's devotional, taken from the book of Exodus, when God makes a move. It was time for a change. It might have seemed to some to be long overdue, not so. God moves according to his own timetable. He had long before told Abraham that his seed would be in a foreign land for 400 years. The date for the change had been marked on God's calendar all the time. Now that time had come. The children of Israel, enslaved in Egyptian bondage, were to be redeemed, removed and resettled. It is instructive to observe four spiritual laws that seem to come into effect at such times. First, there were changing times. The Israelite presence in Goshen had long troubled the Egyptians in a general sort of way. They were different. They belonged to a different God. What if they should side one day with Egypt's foes? Then there arose that king who knew not Joseph, Exodus chapter 1 verse 8. And all of a sudden, everything was changed. The comfortable state of compromise was over. It was the first step in a movement that would change the world. Now came churning tides. The Israelites awoke one morning to the din of war. Pharaoh's army had marched into Goshen. Behind them came the barbed wire, the guard dogs trained to kill, the chains, the taskmasters, and all the paraphernalia of oppression and a new terrible law cast all newborn males into the Nile. Churning tides indeed. The people of God had become too comfortable in this present evil world. They must be made to see it as God sees it, as the sworn enemy of God and all things holy. Oppression and more oppression would come. For now the world's mask was off and its hideous hate-marked face revealed. It is God's way to use the churning tides for his own ends. What churning tides were unleashed in 1939, for instance, when the German army stormed into Poland. The turmoil went on and on until the whole world was engulfed. Millions of people were uprooted from their homes and sent to distant lands. Out of it came a new generation of men and women who had travelled to those lands and who went back as missionaries. The churning tides prepared the way. The modern missionary era began. Next came cheerless toils. In Egypt, the people of God were put to a new kind of work. They made bricks for Pharaoh. Pharaoh had vast plans. He wanted treasure cities built. He wanted bricks. The hated Hebrews were whipped into line. They must make his bricks, more and more bricks. He urged on his slave drivers and they goaded the unhappy Hebrews. They must have wondered, was this the way to the promised land? It seemed like a cynical joke. And then the unexpected and the unexplained took place people began to multiply. The more pressure the world applied, the more the people of God multiplied. It was the same in the book of Acts with the infant church. The pressure of persecution went on for about 300 years until there were more Christians than pagans in Rome. Yes, God was still on the throne. Finally, we see certain chosen tools. There was Jochebed and Amram, who dared to have a son in such troubled and terrible times. There was Moses, the child born to become kinsman redeemer to Israel in the fullness of time. There was Miriam, the brave sister of Moses, who watched over the infant in his ark of rushes in the Nile, fearless of the Egyptian soldiers and Nile crocodiles alike. Others followed. There was Aaron, sent to be a companion to Moses and high priest to Israel, and Joshua, 
chosen of Moses to succeed him and to take possession at last of the long promised land. Though in the onward march of time, God buries his workers, he still carries on his work. We'll understand it better by and by. The Lord bless you today as you seek to live for him. Have a great day.